All right, so this is a different angle than what you were used to seeing because obviously we have my car in here. This is my uh, beater work type car. What we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna do hopefully a print like maybe four or five videos with this car doing different like car things, testing out different car products, that type of stuff. So the first one that we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the windshield. I have four or five, I think four, I have four windshield uh, repair kits that are made to repair like like rock chips and stuff. And we're gonna chip the windshield, see if it works. So we got Rain-X, we got do-it-yourself windshield repair kit. Both this one and the Rain-X one kind of work in the same way. It was really tough trying to find ones that work in different ways because almost all of them, whenever you look them up, almost all of them are this style and it's just like the same thing just over and over and over. So I got those two and I got this one, which is supposed to work like a, it's got like some type of suction cup device that's supposed to work differently than these other ones. And then for like a cheap one, we got this, which it looks literally looks like just a bottle of resin that I think you're just supposed to like smear onto the crack and hope for the best. So we'll see which one works best. First thing first, if you're gonna fix a crack, you gotta have a crack. So I have my window cracking device. We're just gonna get back and make a big, big crack for our repair kit. I'm just kidding. I know it's just for little chips. So we're gonna try to do our best to just make a little chip in the windshield. This is, this is mildly terrifying and it feels so wrong. Wow. No way. Is it because it's a ball peen hammer and it's not like sharp enough? Uh, rocks are usually gonna be a little bit jagged, but. Okay, that's way tougher than I thought. What if we use a claw hammer? Maybe the, the corner of the claw kind of resembles a little bit of like a rock. I mean, there's a little, two little tiny chips there, but that's not, that's not what we need. I wonder if maybe just like a screwdriver and a hammer would be the best option. Oh, that's a... Oh, there we go. Pretty decent. I feel like that's a uh, probably a pretty standard, probably a pretty standard chip that you'd see from a rock or something. Maybe now we can just kind of like. Okay. There you go. It's a pretty standard little rock chip. Okay, so our first step, we're doing the Rain-X one first. The first step is to clean the windshield, which I already did before I broke it. I cleaned the whole thing with Windex. And then after that, it comes with this razor blade. And you are supposed to take this razor blade and, well, I guess ours doesn't really have any. But it says to scrape it over it and make sure that there's no uh, shards of glass in the way. So ours seems to be very clean. So our next step is we have this uh, attachment thing. It says to affix this thing over top of the impact point and put the center of the hole directly over the impact point. So put that there and push the suction cups down. Next we have this piece. This has a little like a rubber tip on it. And you're supposed to screw this into here until the rubber touches the impact point. I might get actually inside the car, make sure that that's there. Looks like it's on the center to me. So our next step is it comes with this repair resin. You are supposed to cut the tip of this off, which you probably shouldn't do your, on your windshield, but whatever. And then you are supposed to drip it says three to six drops. We'll go with six just to uh, be good. 
four, five, six. So you drop six drops in there, and then you have this plunger that you are supposed to screw down in here, and then it'll, I guess, put pressure and force the resin into the crack after you screw it down all the way. And it says to look for leaks, which I do not see. But what's crazy is, whenever you get inside and you look, you can almost see that it's, it almost looks like it's gone. So we're supposed to leave this here like this for three to six minutes. We'll go for the higher end just to be safe. We'll go six minutes and we'll come back. So you are supposed to let this thing sit for six minutes, which we did. Then you're supposed to unscrew this part, which is like the, the pressure plunger. You're supposed to unscrew it and then screw it back in and wait another six minutes, which I did off camera. And then now, you are supposed to unscrew the whole thing and take off the entire apparatus. So we'll unscrew this. Oh, and you're supposed to, you're supposed to have a paper towel to seal the crack, which I forgot. Did I say a paper towel to seal the crack? I meant a paper towel to wipe off the extra resin. That already looks a million times better. That's crazy, actually. I don't know if it looks so good because maybe it was, you know, a fresh chip or whatever. You probably almost can't even see it. So then our next step is to take more of our resin and we're just supposed to drip it onto the area and then take this curing sheet and just set it on there. It said don't apply pressure or nothing. Put a drop on there and then just let it sit. You take it out and you put it in the sun for 10 minutes and it should be good. But we're gonna, we, have, we, have, we obviously have a few more ones to do and then we'll just put them all, put them all out in the sun at once. All right guys, so before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by EcoFlow. EcoFlow has sent me their Delta II portable power station. I'm gonna tell you about it. So first, let's just go ahead and start off with the front. You have, of course, your power button. Turns on. You have a, a very nice LED display that will show you how many hours of uh, charge you have left based on what it is currently doing. So right now it's doing nothing. It says we have 98 hours left. If you were plugging something in and it was running, if it was pulling like I say 100 watts, it would give you an estimate of how long it'll run. It also has an indication for the battery, so we're at 100%. It tells you how much power is coming into it while you're charging it. It also tells you how much power is coming out of it. Across the front, you have four USB ports, two fast charging and two regular. And then you have two USB-C ports that are both support up to 100 watts. Then let's take a look at the back. In the back, you have this panel where this is where you would charge it. Right here is where you can plug in a car outlet or something else that I'll show you a little bit later. You have four regular outlets that are two prong, and then you have two full-size outlets, and then you have a 12-volt cigarette lighter type port. And also, all of the ports can be turned on and off uh, by section. So like, you can turn just these outlets on or off. You can do the same thing with this one or any of the ones on the front. So that's pretty cool. And then we have one more port here on the side. And before I tell you about this port, we'll go over some specs. So the size of this thing is 1,024 watt hours, meaning that you can have something plugged into this that theoretically, if it pulls 1,000 watts, this thing will run it for one hour. Or if it pulls 500 watts, it'll, pull, it'll power it for two hours. Or one watt, it'll power it for about 1,024 hours. It just depends on, on what you're running. So this port right here, depending if 1,024 watt hours isn't enough for you, this port right here is an expansion port and you can plug in another external battery and that will double your size to 2,048 watt hours. So that way you can have double the capacity if you need to. So that's, I think that's pretty cool, especially for like, say if you're using this for camping, road tripping, whatever it might be. So now let's talk about the, the output of this thing. So this thing can output 1800 watts, and then it can also output 2200 watts if you engage X-Boost, which is a feature in the app that I will show you here in a minute. Now let's talk about the batteries. So from zero to 
you can charge this thing in 50 minutes, depending on the charging speed that you have set in the app. You can go, I'll show you, but you can go, you can have any uh, different variation of charging speed. So at the max speed, zero to 80% will take 50 minutes. And then the batteries that are in these things have 3000 life cycles. So you can use this thing once a day for like 10 years. And then also the weight, it's only 27 pounds. So that's extremely nice. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the mobile app. So I drained some of the battery down and then I have it charging now. So you can see on the app and on the device that it says it's gonna take an hour and 18 minutes to charge and that it's receiving 200 and 208, 209, 210 watts. And it's getting zero solar and it is outputting nothing. So we swipe over, you can, from, from the app, you can toggle on and off the different outlets. So if I wanted to turn on my USB ports, I could just turn those on, turn them off. So that's pretty cool. We can go to settings. You can toggle on and off the beep, which I really like. I don't personally like the beep. And then here is charging speed. So, so you can see I have it turned all the way down to 200 watts as like a slow charge. Turn it all the way up to 1200. And it will save that. And you will see it crank itself up. And then now it's only gonna take uh, 21 minutes to get uh, to full. So that's very cool. You can also set your car input. So you can kind of you know do the same thing whenever you're charging it from your car. There's that X boost that you can change it from 1800 to 2200 watts. You can change the discharge level, the unit timeout. So if it's not being used for two hours, it'll automatically turn itself off. The screen time, all kinds of really nice features. The app is really, really useful. Okay, so the last thing with these portable power stations, you can also buy foldable solar panels. And these things are really nice. They just fold out. You can set them up. You could mount these to something. You can set them up somewhere. So if you're camping or whatever, or if you're just if your power's out, whatever it is, you always have a way to charge up your EcoFlow. So the EcoFlow Delta II is not just a battery, it is an essential home appliance. And if you are interested in one, all of the links will be in the description. So for our second one, we already kind of have a little bit of a, a little bit of a chip right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take advantage of that. And maybe like one hit, and we should have ourselves a little, a little chip mark. Oh no, that cracked the whole windshield all the way through this. Didn't think that was gonna happen. Okay, there we go. There's another, another pretty standard size chip mark. And now we have a, a long crack to deal with, which I, ironically, I think one of the products we have, I don't think it's, made for actual chips. I think it's more made for cracks. So that actually might work out. So for this kit, I'm pretty much just gonna do it without without as much of the talking because just like the rain -X kit, the instructions are literally identical and all the pieces are identical. So there's no need to say the same instructions again. All right, six minutes. Actually, 12 minutes, because we gotta do the, we're gonna wait six minutes, pull it out, put it back in, and then we can take it off. This, I don't know what, what the difference is between this resin and that other resin, but this resin stinks. The Rain-X one didn't really have a smell. Wipe the excess off. Yeah, this has gotta be some different type of resin. I do not think that did as good of a job. And we gotta put a little drop. Put that there. Moving on to the next one. All right, on to our third crack. Or chip, I mean. See if we can get this without causing more damage to the windshield. Oh, kinda got something. 
Oh, that crack is spreading. Oh, well, that's probably not going to affect what we're doing. Ooh. It's a pretty decent one. It's probably maybe a little bit on the on the smaller side of things. So the one that we're going to be using is the uh, Blue Star one. This is the one that works completely different with some type of suction device. And believe it or not, I was reading through the directions and this one doesn't seem to really make sense to me. Most of the instructions are kind of the same as the other ones. You're supposed to take your razor blade. Oh, that one actually had a, had a little something on it. The rest of them didn't. You're supposed to clean it up. Wipe it off with a towel. Comes with this little donut thing. So just to take off the adhesive of the donut and put it right dead center of this. And then there's some more adhesive on this side. There we go. So adhesive on this side. <clears throat> you just align this thing up. And then, so the, the instructions have been very straightforward, kind of similar to these two. Oh, you can't really see those, but the other ones, similar to those. Except for now, instead of putting the, so it comes with this plunger. And you would think, or at least I did, that you would take the resin, put it inside this chamber, and then you take this, or put the resin in here, take this, squeeze it down, and then you that would inject the resin into the thing. But instead, what you're supposed to do is take this resin. It says to squeeze the resin into the pedestal, but it does not say how much. It literally just says to squeeze it into the pedestal. It's only like three drops. It can't go anywhere because it's sealed all the way around. The instructions are very weird. Fill it up. I assume uh, the top is as far as you can go. Then it says to insert this plunger into here, like that. And then this plunger has notches on it. And it says to pull this plunger up to the second notch and lock it. And then you're supposed to leave it pulled up to the second notch like that. You're supposed to leave it for 10 minutes. So it's like you're putting it in a vacuum for 10 minutes. For what purpose, I do not know. It doesn't make any sense. And then after, the, you, after you leave it there for 10 minutes, then you're supposed to pull it out and then put it back in and then push it down to the second notch, which doesn't make a bit of sense, but whatever. We're gonna do what they say. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. So now we are supposed to pick this thing up and let the air get in there momentarily, it says. Oh, and then we are supposed to, it's got the notches on it. So then we are supposed to turn this and put it down to the first notch. And that's supposed to be the pressure setting. And then we are supposed to just let it sit for a minimum of uh, 20 minutes, it says. And then after that, we just scrape the whole thing off and it's supposed to be good. So we'll see. So it's been 20 minutes. Actually, it's probably been about 30 minutes. Now we're just supposed to pull this out and scrape this thing off. This thing, this is, this adhesive is really on here. Get it with a pair of pliers. There we go. All right, that actually doesn't look too bad. That's actually kind of crazy. Just like every single other one, the next step is to take some of the resin and put it on the thing, put it on the crack, and take a little plastic piece 
and put it on there. All right, so our fourth kit, the one that is the probably the cheapest. I don't know why the pamphlet has a picture of a Lamborghini on it, but you can see that it's, I guess it's only for cracks, not chips, because it doesn't say anything about uh, chips, and it also has no device, obviously. It's just the resin and the, the plastic pieces. So it has no device to put pressure to like push the resin into a chip. So I'm gonna assume it's only for cracks. And as luck would have it, we do have a crack. I don't know how well you can see it on camera because glass is just so hard to film. But there's a, a crack that runs all through here, all the way down to here, from whenever we were, whenever we were trying to make that other chip. So the process <clears throat> is virtually the same. They give you a razor blade, kind of go over the edges, make sure there's no, no shards of glass or anything. Now what I'm gonna do is this crack runs from like, from this chip all the way over to here. I, I wanna really focus on the end of the crack. And then once it, once it cures, I want to see if, cause the whole point of this stuff obviously would be to stop a crack. So I wanna put it on the edge of the crack see if this resin will get in there and uh, seal it. And then I want to try to like hit the windshield a couple times and see if that crack continues. So that would tell you if, if this stuff is kind of, you know, useless or not. So if you put this stuff on a crack and the, the crack just continues on, then well, it's really not much of a point. then that literally should be it. So from here, we should just be able to put everything in the sun and then we should be good. So I'm gonna put everything in the sun for, I I think it says 10 minutes, but it's kind of a, kind of an overcast day. So we'll leave it out there for maybe like an hour or so and we'll see. All right, we have left everything out in the sun for, I think I left it out there for about an hour. So it should be more than enough. Let's go ahead and reveal the rain -X. Okay, so we're left with some weird, some, some hard layer. And it looks like there's a little bit of resin that maybe didn't dry somehow. And we are supposed to, we're supposed to scrape all this off. So there's our original chip. That actually looks pretty good. All right, so that actually, I mean, there's still, it was a pretty deep chip, so you can kind of still see where it was, but it's not spider webbed out like it was. And it actually, it looks pretty solid. Like I don't think, I mean, we're gonna test and see, but I don't think that would crack anymore. So I'm gonna go, let's go ahead and scrape all of these off. Let's see what they look like. All right, this one, that other weird brand, that honestly looks pretty much identical. Oh, look at that. There's still a little bit over here, but over the chip, I mean, that looks almost identical to the first one, to be honest. It's like, this one looks a little bit bigger, but I think the chip was a little bit bigger. But same thing, whenever the chip was first there, it had like little spider webs off of it. Those have been completely sealed. I can't even hardly see them. And now you're just kind of left with like a, you know, minor chip. Not something that's gonna, not something that's gonna, not something that's going to, you know, become a problem. I'm actually, so far, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Now this is the one I am probably the most curious about since it had like, just a whole, this is a completely weird setup. No way. It looks the same as the other ones. I thought, I really thought that this one was gonna be the worst since it had that whole weird like ring and the plunger that you gotta put in a vacuum and all that weird stuff. It looks almost identical to 
the other two. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm very impressed with this one. The other two, especially the Rainex one. You know, that's a a, a quality brand with a, a big name behind it, so you would expect that one to work. This one, I didn't expect anything, but I mean, it looks like it did really good. All right, so now for this fourth one. That doesn't even, oh, okay. I thought that wasn't even stuck for a second. I don't know how, obviously you guys are gonna be kinda, kinda it's gonna be kinda hard for you to see the crack. Wow, looks like breaking bad over here. So I am very, so far I am very unimpressed with that. Because there's the, the crack is still completely visible. I don't know that it's actually done anything. So the only way that I'm gonna be impressed with this is that if I like beat on the windshield and it doesn't crack anymore, then I'll be impressed. Other than that, at least cosmetically, it's done nothing. So, so far I'm very, very unimpressed with that. All right, I just wanted to give you a close up of each one, which apparently it's done such a good job. Apparently the camera can't even focus on it. Oh, there you go, you can kind of see it. There's the Rain-X one. There's the other one, that green one. You can see almost no spider webbing, but you can see it still looks just like a little chip. You can see that one. This is the one with the ring around it. You can still see a little bit of the spider webbing. We'll see how well that holds up. And then for the crack, this is gonna be almost impossible to see. You can faintly see it here. <laughs> it's just, it's gonna be almost impossible to see. Anyway, it's still there. Okay, so for the final portion of the test, obviously they all did pretty decent, minus the one with the crack. I want to kind of just hit around on the windshield and see if <clears throat> any of that, see if any of them, see if any cracks will form off of them. Theoretically, so on most of these packages, the chips, the, the before and after pictures, they'll show a chip, then the after picture, they'll show something that just looks like completely clean glass as if nothing was ever there. That's obviously not the result we got, so, which is, I think it's, I think that's fine, but I think a big reason that you would use one of these kits, if you have a chip, is to keep it from forming a crack and then say like going from here to all the way across your windshield and ruining the whole windshield. So I think as long as, I'm fine with the end result still looking like a chip, as long as the resin is good enough or they do a good enough of a job that they stop additional cracking. I think that's a huge factor. Let's kind of hit around and see if we can, see if it causes uh, more cracks or see if, see what happens. So I got a rubber mallet here. Actually, let's kind of hit around this crack. I actually, okay. So this crack that we fixed over here, it's actually a two part crack. It goes through here through the chip and all the way down here. It, every time I hit it, I can see it splitting more and it's gonna split all the way down to the bottom, I would imagine. But where we fixed it right here, it has stayed right here so far. Yeah, this has now split all the way to the bottom. And this one has stayed exactly where we left it. Both of these have cracks coming off of them. Not very big, but you can see the cracks. Rainex has nothing. Oh wow, another cracked form. Oh, that crack that we, where the crack had stopped, it formed another crack that went goes from here where we stopped to here. And then another crack just formed from here and goes all the way down to this crack. That third one did not stop anything. I mean, this one, I see other cracks, and I see other cracks here, but they're not really going anywhere. 
I mean, these are, I mean, relatively speaking, these are, this would, this would be something hard hitting your windshield. Okay, the rain -X now has two tiny cracks coming off of it, just like these ones. Okay. I'm impressed with that. That's, I mean, I, I'm very impressed. All three of these, they still have cracks coming off of them, but it is absolutely nowhere near as bad as it would be with but as it would be if you didn't use the resin. And obviously I was sitting here hitting it multiple times. So if you were driving and like another rock or something hit this, I mean, however many times I hit it, say five, six, ten times, you'd have to, you know, hit it a bunch. The only other thing I wish I could test was like heat shock. So like in the winter time, if you, if you kick your defrost on and it's cold outside, I don't know that, I don't know if these would continue to crack or not. But so far, I mean, I think they look pretty good. I'm gonna try my best to get some, to show you up close. So you can see, you can see the original chip there and these are the two additional cracks that came off of it. So that's not too bad. Oh, there we go. You can see the original, the original chip there. Come on, work with me. And then right by my ring finger, you can see that additional chip, or the additional crack. And this one's probably Probably the worst out of the three. You can see multiple spotter cracks off of that. Still not horrible, but not the greatest. And then here, oh, you can actually see that really good. About right here is where the crack stopped. And you can see where it continued on, cracked all the way over to here, and then cracked all the way down here, and then all the way down here. The one we used, the one we used for this crack. Not good. All right, so windshield repair kits. Turns out they work better than I thought. I, up until this point, I've never used one. I was a little skeptical of them. Kind of thought maybe they were just kind of like a band-aid, which I guess they sort of are just kind of a band-aid, but they're a pretty decent band-aid and they work pretty good. Uh, they were easy to use. If, I mean, come on. If I can use it, anybody can figure it out and use it. The rain -X one or any, or any of, I guess really any brand that uses this style of applicator where it like, builds pressure and forces the resin in. If you're thinking about using a windshield repair kit, I would, at least from this test, I would highly recommend going that route. So, that, because I feel like those worked better. The one with like the circle, circular piece worked, but the downside of that one was, it's only a one-time use, because you only get one applicator. With this one, you get a whole bottle of resin and this whole, uh, apparatus i would imagine you could use this probably seven eight ten times or however long resin stays good but overall i think that worked pretty good i definitely would not recommend the one that has no uh pressure applicator that you're just supposed to smear it on and put the plastic on and hope for the best definitely would not recommend that one so thank you guys so much for watching like i said i want to do more video more uh videos with this car specifically we did the windshield. I'm thinking about doing uh, like a paint, like scratch, uh, like scratch repair or something. I'm also thinking about doing some dent repair. So any kind of like car products that you want to see tested, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.